Okay, uh, let me introduce Josh, Josh Brinklow, uh, a master's student and now works for CAE, which is a Canadian aerospace uh, company, but it's the USA branch of that. So it's CAE USA, so they can do uh, US contracts. Uh, so go ahead, Josh. Yeah. Okay. Let me share my screen here. All right, so I have the pleasure of trying to uh, squeeze two different papers uh, into one 15 minute uh, <laughs> presentation. So bear with me. Um, so our, uh, I'm presenting uh, first on optimization of aileron span wise size and shape to minimize uh, induced drag and roll with correlating adverse yaw. And our focus here is finding out the performance of ailerons and induced drag in comparison to morphing wings. In other words, what's the best that ailerons can offer? A researcher named Feifel studied this topic back in 1980 for elliptical wings, but we want to broaden the scope by considering linearly tapered wings with ailerons and find the optimal aileron geometry for minimizing induced drag. Uh, in order to assess the performance of optimal morphing wings accurately, we must be able to compare them to optimal discrete control surfaces. Comparing non-optimal ailerons with optimal morphing wings would lead to inaccurate conclusions. So there are five steps for approaching this problem. Uh, the first is Pr Prandtl's classical lifting line theory. Uh, it's a potential flow analytical theory that details that the section lift for a spanwise portion of the wing is the same as an infinite wing with a similar section circulation. Now, Zach uh, has covered much of the formulation of the lifting line theory, so I'll just reiterate uh, concerning the decomposed Fourier coefficients, where lowercase a, b, and c are connected to plan form, twist, or symmetric twist, and aileron deflection or anti-symmetric twist. We can represent the total induced drag of an untwisted wing of any plan form with ailerons as this top equation here. Uh, here, uh, kappa D is from the difference in plan form shape from the elliptical plan form. The next kappa coefficient, kappa DL, is from the use of ailerons instead of the optimal anti-symmetric twist distribution function to create a rolling moment. Um, for the yawing moment calculation at the bottom, kappa n is the yawing moment factor and depends on plan form and spanwise aileron edge positions. Now that we have these mathematical representations for aileron effects on induced drag and yawing moment, we need to represent the locations where the lifting line solution needs to be satisfied. Here I have a figure uh, showing the uh, lifting, the classical lifting line uh, theory with the traditional clustering of the nodes at wing edges. Um, and really all of this is just trying to show that because we have those ailerons, we want to cluster these nodes or these uh, positions where we're you know, keeping track of our, of our um, making sure that we're, we're satisfying our, our conditions with the lifting line theory. We wanna make sure that we have nodes clustered at the aileron edges. And this is because uh, we have large gradients of lift here. And so we just wanna keep track of those. And the way that we're going to do that is with the numerical lifting line method which uh, is going to be presented in, in following presentations. Uh, to understand more on how we should set up our optimal aileron case, we can look at contour plots in our design space. Uh, for these two figures, the X coordinate represents the beginning spanwise location and the Y coordinate represents the ending spanwise location of the aileron as a per percentage of the wing semi span. Uh, contour lines in this case show aileron deflection. 
A uh, diagonal line boundary defines the limiting case of an infinitely small aileron at any location in the semi-span. And then large uh, aileron deflections are included up to 60 degrees uh, to understand data trends, even though we're not uh, considering stall effects. And so for each of the points in the contour, uh, the aileron was deflected uh, to provide the desired rolling moment. Uh, looking at these two figures, you'll notice here that the contours have significantly different values. And that's because these contours represent induced drag for the wing for two different rolling moment coefficient values. Uh, looking at the orange circle portion of these two figures, we see that the minimum induced drag is found to be at the wing tip, as shown by a small circle at the top of the plots. And this is the case regardless, uh, this was found to be the case regardless of rolling moment or lift changes. Uh, so the aileron route can vary um, for the optimal uh, induced drag coefficient, uh, but the aileron tip is always at the wing tip. And so for the rest of the analysis, we limited the aileron tip to coincide with the wing tip. Uh, we then use the numerical lifting line method to cover a wide range of wing cases, considering lift coefficient, rolling moment coefficient, aspect ratio, and taper ratio. Uh, the optimum aileron routes for a single aspect ratio and taper ratio, uh, we found that they could be averaged across lift and rolling moments with a less than 1% change in induced drag. And so the optimum, optimal aileron routes can be shown on, on this figure on the left. Um, as aspect ratio and taper ratio increase, the aileron route must move closer to the root of the wing to achieve the minimum induced drag. Uh, FIFL reported that ailerons are optimally sized for elliptical wings at 70% semi-span. And so from the right figure, which shows the wing, form, uh, wing plan form penalty factor kappa D, an elliptical plan form would be represented at zero. Uh, the closest tapered wing planform shape to the elliptical planform is a wing with a taper ratio of about 0.4. And so the aileron root values at a taper, taper ratio of 0.4 agree closely with what FIFO reported to have the, uh, the optimal aileron sizing at 70% uh, semi-span. Uh, to calculate the total induced drag, for an untwisted wing with ailerons, we still need values for kappa DL. Uh, a graph of kappa DL is given on the right for multiple aspect ratios and taper ratios. And the lowest kappa DL for any aspect ratio is found at a taper ratio of one. And so now we can, with kappa D and kappa DL, we can now calculate the total induced drag uh, for the uh, wing. And then finally, we need kappa N to find the yawing moment of an untwisted wing with ailerons. And so we have a graph of kappa N on the right for multiple aspect ratios and taper ratios. And the lowest kappa DL, um, or sorry, the uh, uh, we note that at lower taper ratios, kappa N is smaller, which uh, decreases the adverse yawing moment. Uh, and if kappa N is less than zero, the wing would provide proverse yaw. And so with these tested wing configurations, uh, proverse yaw isn't possible. Uh, in conclusion for this paper, the induced drag and yawing moment produced by an aileron deflection for a prescribed rolling moment depends on the size and location of the aileron. Uh, potential flow lifting line theory allows us to find the relations between the aileron deflections and induced drag and yawing moment. Grid clustering limitations require us to use a numerical lifting line method, which is grid resolved uh, for induced drag and lift and yawing moment calculations. The optimum aileron tip is found at the wing tip, while the optimum aileron route can vary with aspect ratio and taper ratio. Uh, and these results can provide insights into uh, wing performance in initial airframe design. Uh, and so all optimal solutions with the ailerons have adverse yaw, uh, but of course, um, as we've kind of alluded in, in some of the other presentations, symmetric twist or washout can be applied to achieve proverse yaw. 
And this follows into our next topic, which is controlling roll yaw coupling with aileron placement and wing twist. So this paper uh, with uh, Zach and, and Dr. Hunsaker um, directly explores the twist distribution required to achieve neutral or even proverse yaw. Uh, adverse yaw is, is the tendency for an aircraft to yaw in the opposite direction of, of the roll. Um, one, Josh? Yes. Can I ask a quick question? So I'm not sure if I missed this or not, but so you are kind of explaining all that based on the aerodynamics, but when you put the, the uh, the control surface uh, close to the tip, then it will also affect the bending moment of the wing. So how can you balance those two? Right, so you would have, uh, you're, you're kind of speaking on a kind of a structural side where if you have the, um, the aileron out to the wing tip that you would have right. some, some structural bending issues. Right. Right, so, um, so you can um, definitely pull the uh, aileron in uh, from the wing tip, um, and our graphs would uh, kind of help uh, help with that. Or you can you can do that. Um, it's just that uh, you would be sacrificing some. Uh, you would be adding some induced uh, drag uh, when you do that. Um, and uh, I believe that's you would. Really, could I say something here, Josh? Um, yes. That's a really, you know, we didn't look at that for this study at all. Um, I think that's really interesting, though, because so basically for, for Josh's study here, we looked at the location and the size to minimize induced drag, right? If you're going to create a rolling moment, how big and where do you want that either on to be to minimize induced drag? And, but that's only a single objective. And if we had done a second objective of what, a, what do the bending moments look like, then we could have had a Pareto front of solutions that show you know, the trade-off between minimizing induced drag and minimizing structure. And, and I'm, anyway, that would be really interesting to look at, but we didn't do it. So we can, mm -hmm. I'm gonna write it down as uh, for someone else in the room to look at. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Did that so, answer your question, James? Okay. Um, so uh, kind of coming back to adverse yaw, um, one way that I like to think about it that makes me it makes it easier for, for me to understand is, um, you know, in, in NASCAR, how the, uh, the track banks to the left. Um, so you can imagine uh, if you're on that track and you bank left, uh, suddenly you're, you're turning right even though the track is banking left, that that's similar to what adverse yaw is doing uh, for these for for the aircraft, um, and so we we really want to to try to achieve uh, proverse yaw and to uh, decrease our our drag, um, <clears throat> and so uh, uh, the Horton brothers. Uh, you know, we're kind of the first to look into some of the uh, mitigating that that issue um, by uh, developing a uh, uh, developing a, a flying wing, and they uh, they have some drawings here on the top right, um, and and Al Bowers and his team, of course, developed that Prandtl D aircraft, um, and we're able to show experimentally that that aircraft aircraft could uh, achieve proverse yaw. Um, so these, uh, the twist distributions shown here are part of a, an optimal class of lift distributions, some of which are Prandtl's elliptic lift distribution or the uh, bell-shaped lift distribution as uh, Zach was explaining earlier. Uh, this class is uh, fully defined by the single parameter B3. And this class is optimal because it contains lift distributions that will minimize induced drag for several different structural and aerodynamic design constraints, uh, and some of which are, are listed here in this table. 
And the problem set up for this research involves finding the aileron design that will give a certain roll yaw coupling when the ailerons are deflected for any given wing plan form and B3 lift distribution. We started off with an analytic development based on lifting line theory and studied this in depth and then moved on to incorporate certain software tools. Uh, we used mockup, which is a modern application of the numerical lifting line theory. And then we also used optics, which is a gradient based optimization tool, and both of which are available on our uh, lab website. The aileron design variables that we are allowed to change uh, are the aileron root location and the aileron tip, uh, which are the, the span-wise locations of the inboard and outboard edges of our aileron. Um, they're shown in a normalized uh, span-wise coordinate uh, framework, which is the percentage of the semi-span, with one being the root and one being the tip. Using these tools, we can determine how different uh, either of the designs uh, behave on a given wing plan form and B3 lift distribution. Uh, so if, for example, if we have a wing uh, with a taper ratio of one and an aspect ratio of eight um, operating at the bell-shaped lift distribution with a lift coefficient of 0.5 and a rolling moment coefficient of 0.1, we can get these results. And these contour plots show the induced drag and roll yaw coupling for all of the aileron designs for this scenario. The horizontal axis shows the aileron root location, uh, location as a percentage of semi-span. Um, and the vertical axis shows the aileron tip location as a percentage of semi-span. Uh, this section right here that's grayed out represents infeasible aileron designs because the aileron tip would then be inboard of the aileron root. Uh, the black contour lines here show that the uh, induced drag coefficient from these different aileron designs for any point on the, this contour um, uh, gives a, a, a different aileron deflection. Um, and the aileron deflection was allowed to vary to ensure that the rolling moment coefficient was met. Uh, we see that the uh, induced drag uh, in black uh, the contour lines in black uh, are minimized uh, when the aileron tip is, is close to the wing tip. Um, and as we move the aileron root outboard, um, the roll yaw coupling increases, uh, the gray line increases uh, in value until it reaches zero, which represents neutral yaw. Uh, moving past this line uh, would reach proverse yaw. Um, and the second graph here shows the same data, but from a different perspective. It shows the aileron center on the horizontal axis and the aileron width on the vertical axis. Uh, we see on the region near the neutral roll yaw coupling line that the roll yaw contour lines are nearly vertical, which means that the roll yaw coupling is nearly independent of the aileron width and mostly depends on where the aileron is centered on the semi-span. Uh, so if the center of the aileron is inboard of this location, there is adverse yaw. And if it is centered outboard, there, there will be uh, proverse yaw. Uh, repeating these studies for a wide range of plan forms and lift distributions, we notice that the uh, aileron design that gave neutral roll yaw coupling and minimized induced drag always had the aileron tip going to the wing tip. Uh, so just like in the, the previous study, we limited um, we limited our study for the aileron tip to reach the wing tip. So we didn't uh, we didn't consider structural constraints. Uh, we looked at a wide range though of aspect ratios, taper ratios, and B3 lift distributions. Um, and so we, we solved for the aileron root location that gave neutral roll yaw coupling. And we show these here on the right. Uh, the subplots show different taper ratios uh, and the horizontal axis shows the lift distribution or the B3 value. And the vertical axis shows the aileron root location. Uh, so for example, if we had a wing with a taper ratio of 0.4, aspect ratio of 20, B3 distribution of negative one third, we would want the aileron root to approximately reach uh, 
63% of the wing semi span to achieve neutral roll yaw coupling. Anything outboard of that point would give proverse yaw, and anything inboard would give uh, uh, adverse yaw. Um, you might notice that these lines end abruptly, and that's because for a given plan form and lift distribution, there's not a single segmented aileron design that can generate neutral roll yaw coupling. Um, from our analytic development, we know that if we used multi-segmented ailerons, it's possible that we could uh, kind of pull uh, these graphs closer uh, to uh, zero uh, B3. Um, and so uh, and one thing we noted from our analytic development is that at a B3 value of zero, which is the uh, elliptic distribution, you know, with the, the single segmented ailerons, there's no, uh, there are no solutions for, uh, uh, there are no solutions for the aileron that can produce a positive roll yaw coupling. Uh, in conclusion, uh, this research demonstrates it is possible to design for a certain roll yaw coupling when ailerons are deflected, uh, just by using twist distribution and aileron placement. Uh, these twist distributions give an optimal class of lift uh, distributions that will minimize induced drag when taking into account certain structural and aerodynamic constraints. Uh, we found that we typically want the aileron tip to extend to the wing tip in order to minimize induced drag coefficients. And we also note that this method is particularly well suited for sailplanes and gliders, which can take advantage of these optimal lift distributions in order to improve uh, aerodynamic efficiency. And uh, at this time, we can uh, we can we can take questions. Any questions? So I don't know if this is related to this or not, but the wing tip is pressure distribution is zero. Mm -hmm. But what if we bring that further down and creating negative? Negative. Yeah. How how does that? Yeah. So actually, can you flip back a slide, Josh? Uh, so any B3 value lower than minus one third, which is this vertical line here we're showing, that's the, this is the bell-shaped lift distribution. Right. Zero is the elliptic. These other ones, B, C, and D are other optimal ones that we found in there. But you can go past here and I'll just create negative lift at tips. And we're showing that, yeah, if you, if you do that, you can, you know, you could, place your ailerons further in board or whatever. And even Zach's uh, uh, presentation earlier, we, we've looked at B3 values lower than this. Um, and, uh, and there are really good reasons to use negative lift at the tips if you're trying to control that risk. Yeah. Your, your drag can go down. Uh, there's, you know, there's, there's benefits to doing that sometimes. So, so does that actually drag goes down? With uh, a negative yeah, I, tip? I, I'd have to go back and look at Zach's stuff again. But I... So I think when we have the negative, there's so then it is contact the bend wing bending. So I thought it could be a structurally probably help. Yeah, right. To alleviate the bending load. Yeah. But um, I don't know the, what kind of aerodynamic impact. Yeah. That will. Yeah, so there's, you're right, there's structural benefits and there's benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't want to stay there in flight. So one of the things, and, and this is the whole idea of morphing, is that we could change between them, right? Because when, when we're in cruise, we want to be in the elliptic, because that's how we have been most drag. But when we're ready to maneuver, there's really good reasons to go away from the elliptic to a, to a bell shape, or even you go past that, you don't have negative back here, depending on how hard of a maneuver you're doing it. So, uh, one thing to note. Um, so, I, I noted earlier that um, 
near the uh, neutral royal coupling line, um, this line is nearly vertical. What that means is that we can, as long as the um, the width of the aileron is the same, um, or no, as long as the uh, the center location of the aileron is the same, we can decrease the the width of the uh, aileron. So we can pull it back from uh, the tip by a, a certain amount. Now that would increase um, induced drag uh, and would also increase your aileron deflection amount, but uh, you would be able to, to pull it back from the tip and avoid uh, structural concerns. I think that plot also shows, you know, why the parental D was able to do what it could do. It had that range out there where it could still produce proverse yaw. Um, yeah, in fact, one of our images uh, in this paper has a penalty estimate. So we looked at their aspect ratio and their aileron. We have a little X on here, and they are above, you know, they're on this side of that line, then we're showing that they should be getting cover shot, and we show that they are. So, but even though that you can change the location and, and still get the proversia, yeah, but why you wanted to put that aileron inboard compared to outboard? Uh, so I don't think there's any benefit. Right. So you don't need to bring it to the inboard at all. No. So no. it will be still out on there. The very tip. Yeah, you'd run it all the way up to the tip. Right. To minimize drag, right? Because that's the right. proper drag solution. And I don't believe your loads are going to be that much different, you know, for the structural reasons. Again, well, that would have been interesting to look at, but we didn't. But okay. yeah, but I think that also, I mean, most most aircraft have ailerons that run basically. To the you know really close to the tip. I think that's the reason. So that was the the drag reasons. I thought that was the control reason because you can create the moment arm, the yeah. longer moment arm. Exactly. But is there a drag reason too? In order to create that moment arm, the further out you put it, the less drag you produce for the amount of moment arm that you need to create. Right. Yeah. So, so all of these plots, for example, are at the same rolling moment. So we're saying we've got to be able to create that much moment on the aircraft. And we find that if we run it out to the tip, that's how we get, how we do that and minimize the amount of drag that it produces. Now you can create that rolling moment inboard, but it's going to require really large deflection that creates a lot of drag. So does this also kind of relates the deflection of the? Yeah. So because depend on how much you, you deflect, much right? Yeah. And so your drag is less. So that is included. That's included in here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have contours of deflection on here, but uh, but you would see that our deflection actually mimics really closely what the induced drag, the contours look like. So yeah, as you move outboard, you, you need less and less deflection, and you create less and less induced drag. Okay. Yeah, because I was not quite sure to relate the drag and the placing the, the aileron out there, but it that drag is related to the deflection yeah. angle. Yeah. Then I, I I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thank you, Josh.